Trigonometric Integrals, Level 5. In the previous video, we started solving trigonometric integrals where the powers on sine and cosine were even. In this video, we're going to go over more challenging examples. Let's jump straight into the first example. Find the integral of sine squared of x times cosine squared of x dx. This is an integral that contains powers of sine and cosine that are even. So we need to make use of the half angle identities. So we first need to replace sine squared and cosine squared with the respective half angle identity as follows. Recall that the purpose of using these identities is to reduce the even power on sine and cosine into odd powers of cosine. This way, we are free to use the rest of our integration techniques learned from the previous videos. Next, we go ahead and factor out the constant obtained from both half angle replacements. In this case, we factor out two one halves. Then, we multiply them to obtain one fourth. The next step is to multiply both binomials and collect like terms. Doing that, we obtain the following expression. Notice that we ended with another even powered cosine term. This means that we have to use the half angle identity once more. So we do just that and obtain the following expression. Simplifying the expression and collecting like terms, we obtain the following. Here, we go ahead and factor out the constant 1 half and multiply it with the constant that we factored out in the previous steps, obtaining the constant 1 8. Now that we have an odd powered cosine term, we proceed with the integration step. So taking the integral term by term, we have that the integral of 1 is equal to x, and the integral of cosine of 4x requires a u substitution. From this point on, I'm going to skip most u substitution steps to save time. In any case, I will make sure that I mention when u substitution is required to find the integral of an expression. So using u substitution, we find that the integral of cosine of 4x is equal to sine of 4x over 4. The final step is to distribute the constant 1 8. Doing that, we obtain the final answer equal to x over 8 minus sine of 4x over 32 plus c. It turns out that there is often more than one way in finding integrals, in which both the exponents on sine and cosine are even. Let's go ahead and solve the same problem using a slightly different method. Since the integrand contains a product containing both sine and cosine, and the powers are essentially the same, they both contain a power of 2, we can actually use the following double angle formula to solve the integral. Sine of 2x equals 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. Notice that we can solve for the product sine times cosine as follows. Then we rewrite the integrand as a product, in this case the quantity sine times cosine squared, so that we can replace this expression with the quantity 1 half times sine of 2x squared. Then we go ahead and square the expression. Doing that we obtain the following. Next we factor out the constant 1 fourth, followed by a half angle identity replacement. So we replace sine squared of 2x with 1 minus cosine of 4x over 2. Notice that we took into account the argument of the expression. We need to make sure we double the argument when using a half angle identity. At this point, the steps in finding the integral are similar if not identical to the way we solved this problem the first time around. All that is left to do is to take the integral term by term. The integral of 1 is just equal to x and the integral of cosine of 4x requires a u substitution, which yields sine of 4x over 4, making sure we include the constant c. The final step is to distribute the constant 1 8. Doing that, we obtain the final answer equal to x over 8 minus sine of 4x over 32 plus c. In this example, we went over two different solution methods that gave the same answer. Note that this will not always happen. In fact, more often than not, we will obtain different answers. This difference will tend to differ by no more than a constant. In this example, it just happened to occur that both answers ended being the same. In general, when we have products of sines and cosines in which both the exponents are even, we will need to use a series of half angle and or double angle formulas to reduce the integral into a form that we can integrate. For the most part, using half angle identities is usually the way to go. Also, 
the larger the exponents, the more we'll need to use these formulas. Let's go over an example that illustrates this repeated use of the formulas. Find the integral of cosine raised to the power of 4 of x times sine squared of x dx. Alright, notice that we have powers of sine and cosine. In addition, both sine and cosine contain even powers. This means that we need to repeatedly make use of the half angle identities. Let's start by rewriting cosine raised to the power of 4 into cosine squared raised to the power of 2. This way we can replace cosine squared with its corresponding half angle identity. The next step is to do just that. We replace cosine squared and sine squared with their respective half angle identities, as follows. We then square the numerator and denominator on the left expression. Then we factor out the constants. In this case, we have 1 fourth for the left expression and 1 half for the right expression. Multiplying these constants, we obtain 1 eighth. We also want to expand the following binomial. Remember, we need to use the FOIL method for this one. Expanding the expression, we obtain the following. Now we have to multiply the trinomial with the binomial. Distributing term by term, we obtain the following expression. Next, we collect like terms and simplify the expression. From this point, it's just a matter of finding the integral, term by term. So the integral of 1 is just equal to x, and the integral of cosine of 2x requires a u substitution. Carrying out the u substitution step results in the following expression. Now, the integral of the rest of the terms is not as straightforward. The integral of cosine squared of 2x contains an even power. This means that we have to apply the half angle identity once again to find this particular integral. So we go ahead and replace cosine squared of 2x with 1 plus cosine of 4x over 2. Once again, make sure you double the argument when carrying out the half angle replacement. Next, we factor out the constant 1 half and proceed with the integration step. The integral of 1 is equal to x and the integral of cosine of 4x can be found via a u substitution. Doing that, we obtain sine of 4x over 4. Then, we go ahead and distribute the constant 1 half. The expression we just found is the integral of cosine squared of 2x. Now we need to find the integral of the last term, cosine cubed of 2x. Notice that this expression contains an odd power. Recall that this is essentially a case 1 trigonometric integral. So we need to decompose the integrand into an even powered function and a single function of degree 1 as follows. Next we use the Pythagorean identity to rewrite the even power of cosine into an even power in terms of sine. This way we can go ahead and carry out a u substitution using the following substitutions. Doing that we obtain the following integral in terms of the variable u. Then it's just a matter of finding the integral term by term. The integral of 1 is equal to u and the integral of u squared is equal to 1 third times u cubed. Next, we distribute the constant and substitute back the original expression for u. Doing that, we obtain the following integral. With this final expression, we essentially found our integral. So we add the constant c. Now, it's just a matter of cleaning this answer a bit. So we distribute the negative signs as follows. Then, we collect like terms. Two of the terms cancel out, which is always nice to see. The final step is to distribute the constant 1 8. Doing that, we obtain the final answer equal to x over 16 minus sine of 4x over 64 plus sine cubed of 2x over 48 plus c. This problem was pretty epic. Not only did we make use of the half angle identities, we also had to use u substitution and a Pythagorean identity. This is why you should be comfortable applying all the integration techniques learned up to this point so that you can solve integrals that require multiple integration techniques. Now that we have covered all four cases that involve powers of sine and cosine, we are ready to cover the case where the integrand contains products of sines and cosines that contain different arguments. This will be the topic of our next video.